All right, you've heard the complaints made in Richard's story that the uh, Dallas police mishandled this case. Dallas Police Chief David Brown to talk about that tonight. But well, I want to I put that on hold. We will, we will get to that. But first, we've been a, I don't know if we should call it breaking news, but there have been some developments tonight, so maybe some good news. You say uh, some of the witness descriptions from the victims have been not all lined up, but you have a witness right. who you think saw this suspect and does have a good description. Yes, and we're going to have that witness in on tomorrow morning uh, to give us a further description. We're going to try to get a composite sketch from that witness description. Some of the victims, obviously, are, were traumatized, weren't able to describe uh, parts of the face because they were covered up, didn't really get a, a good sense. So the range of height and weight is, is kind of far-reaching, mm -hmm. and we want to narrow that down. So this witness saw him. Uh, you know the circumstances? And, well, I think that witness was out late at night mm -hmm. and just actually uh, saw the what they we believe is a suspect walking by, and uh, she just kind of said hello and turned and got a look. And so we're going to take that information from that witness on tomorrow morning. They're comfortable coming in tomorrow morning to give us uh, further details of the facial description and, and height and weight and clothing. And, and again, the, the suspect is also wearing glasses, right. prescription glasses, we believe. And Gold that's going to be important. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, let's talk about some of the things people were listening to in that story. And I'm going to say my experience with you has always been if mistakes are made, truly made, you acknowledge them and you say mistakes were made. Were mistakes made in this case? Should this have been publicized after the first two rapes? I don't believe so. And, and let me start out with my mother lives in this neighborhood. She lives in South Dallas. And she lives alone. And so I have a more personal touch on this, having uh, my mother living in South Dallas in this neighborhood. And so I've taken great pains at looking at all the things we've done, looking back at the first two rapes and what we knew and what we could come forward with. And what we have consistently said about the first two rapes in June is that we didn't have information from the first victim. Was She, she was traumatized mm -hmm. and unwilling to give us any information. And that's not uncommon on, uh, in rape investigations. Some of the victims takes a long time to get over the, the, the first act to be able to talk with police. And so we have to move at the pace of the victim and not at the pace of maybe someone not associated or not who haven't been traumatized. It's the victim who we have to be careful uh, with how we approach them and how we ask questions because we don't want to traumatize them twice through a really hard interview. Got it. So you, you're saying there was just nothing to link anything to There really wasn't. There was two rapes in June, and then there was a six-week gap where there were absolutely no criminal offenses in that area related to a sexual assault. And then immediately after six weeks, uh, transpired then we start with five consecutive ones over a very short period of time tell me uh, to interrupt you what, what sure. do you make of that six weeks of nothing at all it would just be speculation one of the things that may have occurred the person may have been in jail uh, the because person, after that six weeks very active very, very active immediately after the yeah. six weeks and so being in jail is, is one you speculative review? we are we're doing a jail audit uh -huh. to de determine if anything jumps out at us as okay. far as a sex offender that might have been arrested or someone that might have been arrested for some other offense mm -hmm. but fits the description that we have so uh, we're, we're putting together all efforts all of our investigative tools in order to try to resolve this issue by bringing this person to justice when you hear councilwoman uh, davis say if you'd announced the two rapes the other five might not have happened uh, yeah. Others, other, other six, I guess, um, or, or people say the attacks, if they'd happened in North Dallas or a different neighborhood, right. they would have been handled differently. How do you respond? We listen to the criticism. We, we have a philosophy of embracing criticism because you can learn some lessons from people's critiques of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But I've looked at this. Uh, I looked at all the details that we knew from the very beginning, and that is absolutely not true, that it was differently done in North Dallas. If you recall the Lake Highlands rapes, mm -hmm. there were three uh, over a month's time. And we didn't come out to the public until the third because we couldn't connect one suspect who uh, we thought fit the description but ended up being not the suspect. It was DNA that kind of forced us to go in a different direction. And that was a month. You look at these incidents, we're talking about 10 days uh, from August to September and then two incidents in June where the witnesses, the victims, I'm sorry, didn't come forward with information to provide any kind of links uh, to suspects amongst the other uh, crimes. Did, did the Katy Trail, was, was that faster moving? 
it was actually very slow or moving. The, the Katy Trail was a series of robberies, yes. not sexual assaults. Right. But there have been letters about that, too. Sure. The Katy Trail was a, a series of robberies. We didn't have any information, but we right. just knew kind of similar methods of operations, the MOs. And it took a lot of time to it put those too. together. Okay. And But we put, went to the public as soon as we had a link. And, and, and that's how we really always conduct uh, investigations when we have a link. But let, let me make sure I carve out what's different about sexual assaults. And I mentioned it earlier, is that you go at the pace of the victim. Some victims can never talk about it. And some victims can talk about it after a few days. And some victims right away, they can tell you a really good description. And we have to wait for the victim to be comfortable to talk to us before we get that type of information. And we just didn't have that in June. And then we had a six-week gap. And so you're already a month and a half into a series of rapes and you don't have any leads and you don't have any information from the victims. I know it's been important that we put up a tip line and we've been running that. And right. there it is right there. Great. So during this interview we'll have that up. So if, if anybody's watching and, and yeah. you think you know something about it, call that tip line. Sure. Um, we, we've also got a map of the general area where these attacks yes. have happened. Talk to the people who live within this area. What should they be doing? Uh, I'm sure some people are afraid. How right. should they respond? What do you advise them? So let me first say that these rapes have occurred between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. So this is overnight, and it's really dark. And so if you're out walking to the bus stop, I heard some women walking to, to mm -hmm. the bus stop from to and from work uh, to try to be aware of your surroundings. Walk in lighted areas. Try to walk with someone because uh, five of the victims have been assaulted because when they were alone. One victim was assaulted with someone, but he, this, this suspect seems to be tracking women who are alone. I was going to ask you, how do you think he's getting away with it? Because he's targeting people who are alone. Who are alone, coming up from behind. Uh, he's covering his face, uh, and he's very quick at what he directs the victim to do. He first robs them, and, and, and then he takes them to a secluded area. And so being aware of your surroundings, walking with someone, walking in a lighted area, uh, Call, if you have a cell phone, call 911 with any uh, one you see that's suspicious. That, that's the, really the most important thing. If you think about uh, other cases that we broke, it's because someone called about something suspicious and we got a piece of evidence that led us to another piece of evidence that led us to breaking the case. All right, we're going to put up the description that we have uh, and let people look at it. I don't know if anything jumps out. What does, you pointed out, is kind of varied because there have been some varied descriptions right. by people, who, women who are traumatized. But again, you think you're going to get a composite out of this We tomorrow. think so, yes. And that's really going to be important because we're having a community meeting on tomorrow yes. evening. Mm -hmm. We want to take that composite to the meeting if we can get it done in time. Uh, we want to first tell the public, show up to the community meeting at Truly Baptist Church there in South Dallas. And we're, we, we've got thick skin. We want to hear you vent your frustration and then we want to talk with you about helping us solve this crime. So we expect some frustration to be expressed. We want to be able to explain there was a six-week gap. Mm -hmm. I think people don't generally hear that when we say it's been since June, but six weeks of that was no activity at all. And the first two, we didn't have uh, full cooperation from the victims because they were traumatized. Going to be a lot of people walking around a fair park in about three weeks with a state fair. Yes. Does that concern you at all? Does that play into this at all? I'm more concerned about the people that live in South Dallas at this point. Okay. We, we are driven by protecting this neighborhood, not so much uh, any kind of tourism from the state fair. This neighborhood is the most thing important to us at this point and bringing this person to justice. Another thing, South Dallas is a small place. It's people not many people. people Know Someone knows there. this yeah. guy. Uh, he's between 5'6 and 5'11, about 200 pounds, prescription glasses, gold rims. Help us solve this case. Someone knows this person. We want you to come forward and help us uh, protect the people in South Dallas. I'll circle back a little bit because I, I, I don't know if this aggravates you or, right. or just disappoints you, but uh, you are from that area. I am. And you get the criticism of maybe you're not helping your own area uh, do you do you cater more if you or care more or you respond faster to a crime in north dallas or around highland park it, it, you know it, right. i don't know if it's if these concerns right. are racial or economic or what but there's been that criticism do you respond right. to other areas before you respond to south dallas? first i don't want not to acknowledge that people have a perspective based on their own experiences irregardless of the facts for some the facts just don't matter mm. But for those who believe that the facts do matter, in June, those victims didn't cooperate, which meant we weren't able to connect the dots. There was a six-week gap, 
and then we had 10 days of crimes that we put together immediately after re-interviewing the victims when they were able to come forward. And that same day we put it together, we came to the press and put it out to the public. So if the facts matter to you, there's no difference between North and South on, on this investigation. If the facts don't matter, nothing I can say to convince you that there was no difference. And so we try to move forward and as much as we can, listen to criticism, accept the frustration vented by those who have perspectives not based on the facts, but at the same time, we have a job to do. And our job is never done. There's always another suspect to catch, and we want the public's help in catching this particular suspect for these crimes. All right, Chief Brown, we'll look for that composite and maybe get a break, sure. maybe soon. All right. Thank you. Chief Appreciate Chief it, Steve. Brown, thanks. All right, brother. You mentioned the, uh, the, concern, the public safety meeting tonight to address those concerns about the serial rapist. Public safety meeting held tomorrow night at the Truly Missionary Baptist Church. That's 3907 Bertrand Avenue. Members of the Dallas Police Department will be there. You heard the chief say, if you want to vent, vent. They want to hear it. Council members will be there. Members of the Public Safety Committee will be there to answer questions, too. It starts at 6 p.m., and you are invited. And once again, the Crime Stoppers tip line, 214-373-8477.